Hey folks, uh, it's 2024 and this is the second take because I just screwed up the opening by forgetting to unmute the microphone. It's on the checklist and I missed it again anyway. I was talking about 2024 being the year of democratic society if we can keep it. And I'm worried about that and I want to talk about that uh, in the year going forward. But right now it's Tea Tuesday and uh, let's uh, make it happen here. Uh, um, okay. Uh, uh, the goals for this time was, uh, the single loop interface running and the Breitenberg car running, uh, the, I did pretty well with the single loop interface. Talk about it. Uh, the Breitenberg car is, the, it's funny. The, the hard part of the Breitenberg car seems to be the wheels. <laughs> And the second part is the light sensor, but step by step, I'll talk about it and then we'll go from there. Uh, um, okay, the serial loop hardware, the serial loop software, that's what I want to talk about. And then the simulator, uh, uh, this is the big picture. Uh, uh, the original, uh, first the T2 matrix stuff that we were doing for the uh, re uh, artificial life, digital replicator, all that stuff was completely internal to the T2 matrix. The idea here is to have some kind of connection so that a chunk of matrix no longer necessarily or even intended to be indefinitely scalable. In other words, I mean, the matrix, a finite chunk of the matrix, it's always been finite, of course, uh, is going to connect to something out in the world and have senses and motor actions and so forth. That's the goal. Uh, um, the connection uh, went through a couple of things, and this is just straight engineering task given the T2, uh, particularly given their slowness. This is not meant to be a biological model. This is not meant to be an artificial life model. None of that. This is just straight engineering given how much bandwidth we have and how much time we need, how much time we have and how much bandwidth we need. Uh, to this idea of making a loop that uh, here, this laptop is the simulated world, goes through a, a USB to serial port, and when it wants to send a packet to say this one, it sends it to the first one that has to recognize that it's supposed to forward it, which sends to the second one, which sends it to the third one, which has to recognize it's for it, and it does whatever it is, and then the response comes back uh, around the loop. That's the goal. We had a terrible little prototype Type uh, a couple of them that I hand put together. Uh, here's what we have now. sent a board off, got some back. So that's it. So here they are. These are uh, the first generation serial tabs. And the idea is uh, instead of, well, you know, trying to figure out these are, are male and female uh, connectors. And so we can just stick them together in the correct direction. Uh, uh, assuming I can get the correct. There it is. Uh, uh, and then they, they click together and, you know, the idea is I can just kind of spin them, uh, while I'm connecting them. So it'll make kind of a twisted pair, uh, um, and they disconnect and so forth. So, you know, it's, it's not too bad. Uh, um, and let's right. And oh, so then the big trick, you know, so these things are all designed so that they fit right into the, the tile, uh, serial ports on the tile. That's what this thing is for. Uh, uh, but we also need to connect to the FTDI cable, the USB thing that goes off to the laptop. 
And uh, in order to do that, I figured, well, you know, I'll just use a male to male connector here, a gender changer, so that I can plug one of these into that thing. And then that'll look like an extra node on the loop and everything will be fine. And so I hooked that up from a USB cable to the key master to another tile and then back to the uh, FTDI cable. And, uh, you know, so here was a picture of it. You know, here's the, there you can see the gender changer over there. And uh, then it comes out and it goes into one of these and then from one it goes to the other one, the other one it goes on back like that. Beautiful. And I hooked it all up uh, and, you know, so the, this part is the part that's close to the world, right? Because uh, uh, that's going off to the USB connection and these parts here, these tiles here are like the brainstem. That's where the information from the spine hits the brain, the matrix, the cortex. This is going to be a lot simpler than that. Uh, um, there's going to be a, like a whole lot more tiles around it. So only certain tiles will be connected to the spine and, and the rest of the matrix that's involved will have to figure out how to route stuff to and from that. So that's the picture. And, and, and we'll see how it's coming. The, the first attempt that I did, it didn't work. <laughs> And uh, why didn't it work? Because when you use a gender changer, you're actually changing something important, which is uh, uh, each of these cables has to take the transmit signal and turn it over and so that it plugs into the receive signal of the downstream thing. And then it's transmit or it's TX goes into RX of the next one. And when you put in a gender changer, uh, uh, you don't do that. It ends up being TX going to TX, RX going to RX. It doesn't work. So I took one of them and, you know, so the black wires are, are ground. The red wires are the data. I cut them. <laughs> I uh, soldered them, I, I heat shrunk them, and that's what this actually is here. You can see there's the heat shrink. I also use Sharpies to color in the board just to make it clear that this is a crossover cable. Uh, um, and then and then it worked. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, I wanted to show you, I've got it running right here. I wanted to show you the demo, but my overhead camera is uh, currently screwing up. I've got to deal with that. Um, so I just took that picture instead, but uh, we can look at it here. So uh, in the top window, that's the uh, uh, talking directly to the workstation that we're at. Uh, the one in the middle is talking to the key master by SSH. The one at the bottom is talking together. We can start T2 Sir Loop Runner uh, uh, and this is all just debug stuff. It's, you know, so th they're just sending little messages to test what's going on. Uh, we could start, whoops, we can start the next guy and he's doing the same thing. Now, when we start the world, the one that's doing the simulation, that's kind of in charge of everything. That's the host in this case, again, because this is not meant to be indefinitely scalable. This is just meant to get the job done. So we'll start this up and it will sort of take over and start doing things. And that's the key right there. Loop length is two. Uh, um, so it enumerated the loop by sending a special packet around that uh, uh, get every, each of the loop the tiles that forwards it decrements a counter and then come back and you can tell from how many times it was dec decremented how big the loop is. And, you know, uh, and again, this is all just silly debug stuff. But, you know, one thing that is quite interesting is, you know, the last two characters of each of these packets, cube, OMM, KJF, all that stuff, those in fact is our a checksum, two bytes that summarize the rest of the packet and they have to be consistent. Uh, um, based on a discussion on the Discord with Tim Tiggs, who was saying, you know, if you're going to feed this data through all of these uh, tiles, you know, how do you know it won't get corrupted? And I said, well, you know, I'll put in a checksum. Uh, I wasn't really thinking that it was going to be a problem, but it turns out it really is. Why? Not actually because of like cosmic rays, although that could certainly happen. But what does happen for sure is, you know, a tile in the loop might reboot or might be rebooted or whatever. And as it turns out, the serial port on the T2 tiles, when the Linux kernel is booting, it gets used for debug messages. <laughs> and, and there's really, you know, nothing that you can do to control that without getting extremely low level. And if you do get low level, then you, you lose information that you may well need. But the messages that the kernel have 
they have a one in 65,000 chance of getting the right checksum. So they don't, and they all get rejected by the down the downstream guy. He just tosses them all out. And then whenever the one, in, I mean, the loop doesn't work while the thing is, is in the middle. Uh, but once it comes back up and uh, the T2 sir loop starts running, then it just picks right up again. So that was pretty nice. Uh, uh, okay, so that's that. Um, and that's the serial loop software. <sighs> um, <laughs> well, so at first it didn't work because we need had have to have the crossover cable. Uh, uh, but what was actually true in the demo that we just looked at, uh, I didn't take the time to show it to you exactly. Uh, the packets run backwards. Uh, you know, like there, it's you really can't see it, but one of them is labeled. Uh, one side of the thing is labeled loop out, meaning the data is supposed to come out there. The other side is labeled loop in, and the data is going the other way. It's like, <laughs> I can't believe how I can screw up these things so reliably. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, uh, Sergey uh, has put in a pull request because I managed to screw up the inverse symmetries in the MFMS simulator. And I haven't dealt with it because I haven't gotten back to Ulam yet, but I will once we get this stuff set up and it's time to actually start running the signals through the matrix. I'll have to go fix that, you know. <sighs> Terrible. Uh, okay. Uh, so what did I do about the fact that signals were all running backward? I did another order to Oshpark, the uh, printed circuit board manufacturer. I didn't use rush service on them, so they haven't come back yet. They might actually ship today. We'll see what happens. So that's the story on the hardware and the software for the spine in the effect. Now, on the simulator, the goal was to use this thing, Mujoko. Mm, I don't remember joint coordinates or something, motion, whatever it is. It was the newer, more advanced thing, and I completely failed. And it's just sort of a reflection on what uh, programming design, programming seems to be these days, that the reason I failed is because there was a package called Mujoko underscore Pi, a Python package that was... Uh, previously used a lot. It had a lot of documentation. Uh, it had a lot of tutorials, easy to get going. Uh, but now the the authors, of the, so the creators of Mujoko came out with their own package, which is much lower level, and there's very little friendly documentation for it. And I tried and tried to figure out how to do things in the new Mujoko way. Uh, uh, and I couldn't. I even tried one of the large language model AI things and said stuff like, you know, how do you, you know, connect to the display in Mujoko without using Mujoko Pi as part of the prompt? And it would give me a bad answer. It would say, okay, here's how to do it without using Mujoko Pi. Step one, import Mujoko Pi. You know, that kind of thing. Anyway, I finally gave up. Uh, and so I looked around and I found, you know, this R Ludo bots on Reddit, subreddit, uh, for doing uh, little robots, little 3D robots in a world. And I didn't even, I started working through it and it's wonderful, tiny little steps. And I didn't even realize at first that it was created by Josh Bongard, who's an artificial life guy. He's a buddy. Uh, uh, and this thing is great. So I just went through it. You know, installation, you know, and here's an example of how finely down he takes it to it. He reminds us in each step to start a new branch uh, so that we don't lose our old stuff and go check it out. Very, very detailed, very nice. Uh, simulation, one link, two links, joints, sensors, motors. I did it all the way up to the refactoring step that he's got to clean it up. It's great. Uh, uh, now I'm branching off because um, I'm not going to use neur neurons and senses like he's doing since the point is to connect to the T2 matrix, uh, uh, but it got me this far. And, you know, so that's the new plan to use Pi Bullet. So here's a little bit of uh, what that's looking like so far. This is one of the evolutionary robots. Uh, the, the simple beginning is three cubes that are, that are connected together by joints. And I started looking for wheels, you know, instead of just cubes, I wanted cylinders. I found wheels. <laughs> 
I mean, there's basically this whole examples directory that I hadn't looked at that has like a ton of stuff in it, uh, uh, including a really complicated little car uh, uh, that I spent a lot of time trying to get it to drive. Like on the upper right here, this thing is like the wheels are spinning 360 degrees. Uh, that's pretty tricky. Uh, um, but that's where we're at now. Uh, um, there's no sensors yet, and there's, you know, these things are way more complicated than the, uh, um, the Breitenberg vehicles are supposed to be. Now, I'm not 100% sure it has to be Breitenberg vehicles, but we'll see. So, overall, uh, we're supposed to do deploy the interface, hello T2 matrix. I'm saying enumerating a loop is hello T2 matrix. So, we did okay. The uh, next goal is to actually come up with a Breitenberg vehicle, Breitenberg car controlled by the T2 matrix screen. That's it. That's the next goal. And you know, have lots of fun. And so that's it. And I've run a little bit long, but happy new year. Uh, and thanks so much uh, for stopping in whenever you came to take a look.